What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name is Matt. I just drove eight hours to Upper Michigan to pick up that beauty right there. So as most of you guys know, I am based west of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania and uh, just made the trip a little over eight hours with uh, traffic and everything to Indian River, Michigan. And we came up here to pick up this beautiful International 8250, I think it is. There's a model number somewhere. 3850 that's what it is it's an international 3850 and it probably looks like it's going to be a bit big behind my pickup truck but uh theoretically this thing only weighs 15,000 pounds according to what i can find online so we should be pretty good to pull it this thing has an international six-cylinder diesel in it and a very 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 generous subscriber reached out to me and said hey uh if you want this thing you can come get it. Otherwise, it's going to the scrapyard. And you know me, I can't let that happen. So, yeah, it does not currently run, but he says they had it running on ether not that long ago. So, I'm hoping that uh, with a little bit of a tinker in here, I can get this thing fired up, drive it on the trailer, and uh, drive eight hours home. Well, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, let's dip this fuel tank and make sure we actually got some fuel in there. That looks good. Plenty to get this thing running and onto a trailer. She's a little low on oil, but it's got enough to start it. So this is our fuel injection pump on this unit. And what I'm betting is going on here is, you see this wire coming in here? I'm betting it's not getting power to this wire. And we need power there to open up the fuel shutoff solenoid uh, to allow this engine to start. The gentleman giving me this machine said that his dad started to do something with the ignition there. And as you can see, the wiring harness has been kind of gutted apart. And I'm betting that what's happening there is that uh, that solenoid is not getting power. All right, so with my jump pack, I'm just putting 12 volts directly to that little solenoid. And I don't know if you guys can hear it clicking. It is functioning in there, so that's good. I just need to figure out how to get this thing to crank over now, and I'm hopeful we can get it going. Here we go. Contact. Here we are back on top of our uh, injection pump. Underneath this cover is a fuel shutoff solenoid. Long time viewers of the channel will recall my revival of the loader I have known as Fat Alice. Back when I got that thing. We got fuel coming out of there, so that's good. Anyways, back when we revived Fat Alice, we had a problem. It was not... The solenoid was actually functioning in there. You could hear it clicking, but the paddle that the solenoid runs uh, was not moving. So we had to pop this cover off and physically free it up. We're going to try the same thing again today. 
I'm probably not filming things as good as I normally would here for you guys. Um, and I apologize for that, but I am running out of daylight here. And uh, I'd like to drive eight hours back home tonight. And have some semblance of uh, staying in my own bed. So that's a grounding lug we got there. This cap should just pop off now. There it goes. So this guy right here, this little finger sticking up out of the fuel, that's what that solenoid runs. It does kind of seem like it was a little sticky, but not nearly like the Fat Alice. I mean, I had to, it was a loud audible crack when that one popped loose. All I can do is uh, try, so I'm going to put this thing back together now, cross my fingers. Alright, I put some more fuel in it. And I cracked open a few of the injectors here. I'm going to go ahead and crank on this thing and see if I can't get some fuel to come out of it. Contact. Contact. Pushing any fuel yet? No. Really starting to wonder about our fuel supply here. All right, so in my infinite wisdom here, I was anticipating potentially having to winch this thing up onto the trailer, which is hard to do with the bucket on the ground. So one of the first things I did here, I didn't show it, but I threw a bungee cord on the, uh, the boom up lever. So while I'm playing around cranking the engine back there, the boom was slowly, slowly, slowly lifting up. But I cranked it enough to where the bucket finally came off the ground. The trouble is I'm an idiot and I wasn't thinking about the bucket going a little bit forward. You know, it has an arc swing as it goes up. I had my truck pulled up real close so I could have the jumper cables hooked to it. And uh, it actually pushed onto my bumper and it knocked this piece of plastic off my bumper. Just like this guy over here. I threw it in the bed. It doesn't, it's not a major thing, but you know, these things happen. Pretty irritated with myself about that right now. I'm losing daylight really quick here. I think I'm going to throw in the towel. I don't understand why we're not getting fuel up to our injectors. I'm thinking there's an injection pump issue. And, uh, you know, there's a reason why machines are free sometimes. They need a little bit of loving. So, well, hopefully, without too much trouble here, I'm going to be able to get this thing winched up on the trailer and we can get out of here before midnight.
only took like two hours. It's dark, dark. I think it's like 11 o'clock almost. Only eight more hours till I'm home. Well, I just made it home. I, uh, I drove straight through the night and let's see, I've been up for 26 hours now. So I'm ready to go home and take a nap. But uh, the trailer performed flawlessly. The only issue I did have, uh, well, first of all, I want to address the ride height. It looks like I have too much tongue weight and I don't. It, the, the tongue weight I think is actually perfect. Um, the hitch on the trailer could have used to go down a notch because I'm all the way up as high as I can on the pickup. Um, there is another slot that you could drop the, uh, the pinnel ring uh, down on the trailer, but the, the bolt that holds that on there, I was able to get the top one off and then there's a bigger one underneath of it. And I worked and I worked and I worked and I could not get that sucker broke loose. I did try to uh, change that before I left, but uh, unloaded, it looks pretty good. But by the time you put some weight on it, it uh, kind of noses down there. But it rode really nice. I mean, excellent. Could not have asked for a better ride all the way home. The only issue I had uh, was this right here, this pin. See how it slides through right there? It actually wore itself down to where it'll fit through the ramp. It's supposed to have like a shoulder to where it can't slide out. And I stopped at a rest stop and the ramp was barely hanging on there. I mean, this, this pin was slid all the way out over here and there was like this much of it was still hanging in the ramp. Uh, it was amazing that didn't come out and hurt somebody. So I uh, got really lucky with that one. I threw a strap on it afterwards and that kept it from sliding as much. But now that I'm home here, we're going to take a big fat flat washer and weld it on there so that that can't happen again. But uh, other than that, the brakes worked, the lights all worked. And uh, yeah, she just made it through her uh, trial by fire just fine. So I'm gonna unhook this thing for now. I'm not even gonna take the machine off because I am ready to go take a nap. I'm definitely happy with this machine uh, especially for the price like I said the guy was generous enough to give it to me so uh, that being said it was free for a reason you know it's got some slop pins and bushings have seen some better days This cylinder looks okay, but the one on the other side... This one here has got cracks all the way around it. That one needs re-welded pretty bad.
All right, so we got the 3850 in the shop here. I took the hood off of it, which wasn't even bolted down. I wish I'd have noticed that before I hauled it eight hours, but <laughs> oh well, it made it. So I pulled the hood off just for a little better access and uh, visibility to see what was going on here. This pump, I talked to my buddy Wes over at Watch Wes Work, and he knows about these things better than I do. So he told me a couple things to check, which I already did, and I, I knew that they were good. And uh, I had a, a brainiac idea. I was going to blow compressed air into the fuel inlet while I was cranking on it just to see if that extra little bit of pressure could maybe pop something loose that's just a little stuck inside of that pump. Uh, I don't know all the mag I don't know all the magic that happens in there, but uh, I'd, I'd given that idea a thought. And then uh, in the midst of talking to Wes, he said that they do the same thing. So I felt a little bit better about my uh, redneck ingenuity, and uh, we're going to give that a go. But first, he also said that just running them straight out on ether can also free up uh, the plungers inside of there. So depending on what the issue is in there, those two fixes might be able to get us going. Either way, this pump may end up coming off and going to area diesel service, but I'd really like to hear the engine run before I bother to sink any money into an injection pump. So we're gonna feed her some ether, and I know this is gonna make a lot of you fellers cringe, but two thirds, I'd say, of the people that complain about ether are the ones that say you're gonna smoke the top end of the engine. It says right there, upper cylinder lubricant. All right, it's not, uh, it's not just all 100% ether. In fact, this stuff's probably only like 40 or 30% ether. I have 80% ether, and I only use that when it's really, really cold. All right, so I got the 12 volts going to the injection pump for the uh, shutdown solenoid. We're gonna feed her some sauce and see if she's gonna fire up on ether and we'll run it that way for maybe just a couple seconds and see if that's enough to start pushing some fuel up to our injectors here. Anyways, contact. Oh boy! The machine actually jumped a little bit. I don't know if I maybe slipped it into gear or what happened there. boy we're moving the loader must be in forward well it's a bit of a letdown but the ether doesn't seem to be doing the trick so we'll try the compressed air job might need a rubber tip gun for this contact Yeah, the rubber tipped gun seems to fit in there and seal a lot better. Let's give this a go. Contact. All right, so at this point I'm running out of ideas on this thing. Uh, just to recap here, I've confirmed the internals of the pump are turning, so you know we didn't shear off a gear. Uh, the, the input shaft into the pump is still good and uh, engaged. We have a good supply of fuel. The pump will fill itself up with fuel. It'll prime up the whole pump housing here, just like it should. So the transfer pump is working. The high pressure side of the pump is just not functioning for whatever reason. All right, it's time to get serious. I, I'm not getting anywhere with this pump on the machine, so I'm going to have to take it off and tear it down. First step in removing this pump is to get these lines all off of here. And I have undone them all off of the pump itself, and I think all but one uh, injector are ready to pull. Look at this guy. This last one, I was just reaching back there and doing it by feel with the wrench. And it didn't break loose from the injector, it unscrewed the injector. Ta da!
All right, with all the lines off and out of the way, we can get into the pump a little bit easier. I have opened up the timing cover here on the pump. I don't know if you guys can see, there are two little lines on opposite sides here. There's two opposing, from this angle, it looks like two opposing discs. And there's a line on each one of them, and uh, only one moves. So when you have the lines lined up, that means your pump is in time. And then over here, I pulled the back cover off of the gear that drives the pump, and there's a little timing dot on it. And I just made a mark where it goes because you can't actually see the other dot on the corresponding gear. So I'm 99% sure that'll be good enough. Also, you can rotate this pump ever so slightly on the engine here, and that adjusts your timing of the pump. So I've made a punch mark on both sides plus a couple paint marks, but the punch marks are just in case I lose the paint marks. The paint marks are a little, uh, a little more definitive. The punch marks are very close as well, but anyways, we just have to disconnect throttle linkage now. We should be able to take the couple nuts off and slide that pump out of there. Now hold on to your hats, it's coming off one way or another here. There we go. Alright, so I took this apart the way the manual doesn't tell you to do it. They say you're supposed to undo the gear on the back here, and uh, yeah, you're supposed to leave this shaft with the pump. I decided not to do that. All right, so I cleaned the pump up a little bit, threw it in the vise here, and there's probably a proper procedure to tear this thing down, but I don't know it, and I think we're going to be all right. So there's like a uh, tamper-proof wire here and these screws. Take that off first. I'm going to pull this cover off of here. Also, if you happen to be watching and you're like some sort of expert with these pumps, you're probably going to want to look away now because I'm sure I'm going to botch this. All right, so this is just your uh, feed pump side, I guess you'd call it. This is just what pulls fuel from the tank and shoves it over to the high pressure injection side. Anytime I disassemble something I've never had a part before, I, uh, well, A, nowadays I record it, so that's beneficial if I can't figure it out putting it back together later, but usually I just take everything apart that I can, and somewhere along the line, something will unveil itself as to how to take apart the rest of whatever it is. I don't get too worked up about much because at the end of the day there's a million of these pumps in the world so if I screw it up there's information out there on how to fix it or somebody out there that can fix it for me. Not one time that I can think of though that I ever have to resort to uh, letting somebody else fix it. I was always able to pull it together on my own. See, down here in the very bottom of this pump, we're getting into dirtier and dirtier fuel. That fuel there 
It's actually got some crud in it. Look at this thing. Got some corrosion and rust on it. That could have inhibited movement. Uh-oh. See? Good thing I did that over my hand. There's a little button in there. Probably changes things. I don't know what I'm unscrewing right now, but uh, it feels gritty. Like there's maybe particulate down in there or something came apart and got ground up, I don't know. There we go. That's what I was after. I can't tell what's down in this port. But it looks like there may be some goopiness. And if anything's blocking that passage, that would uh, probably stop us from running. Oh yeah, there's some stuff in it. Sometimes, some things, I don't need to worry about putting right back together. I know that I'll remember how they go together. This is not one of those things. I definitely want to get this thing back together ASAP because I can tell this is going to be a debacle. Oh, that didn't seem good. Oh, that was not good. Dang it. Uh, there's like a ball in here that adjusts the timing and I just broke it. What the heck do I do about that now? Can you spot the problem in there? Uh. Well, unfortunately, it seems that we're uh, at a bit of an impasse here. Being is that I broke that ball thing down inside there. I think I needed to get that out to finish removing uh, the rest of the components here. If that was out, I think everything would just slide right out of there. But unfortunately, it's, it's broken and I don't know what else to do with it. So since I'm operating at the edges of my uh, skill level already, I'm just going to go ahead and package this mess up and uh, ship it down to area diesel service and let them sort it out and send me back a nice freshly refurbished pump and then we should be good to go. I think we got all the pieces. Off to area diesel service it goes. Da -da -da -da! We just got a box in the mail from area diesel service and I think I know what's in it. I don't know if you guys can hear the heavy breathing, but that's my helper today. This is penne, like the pasta. I don't think she's ever made an appearance on the channel before. But everybody asks how the dogs are all the time. They're good. They've just multiplied. We've got four now. We've got Roscoe, Meatball, Penne, and her uh, one of her puppies, the Sweet Pea. So, anyway, back to diesel performance parts. The foam packaging, and voila! Look at that beauty right there. Oh, I cannot wait to get this thing installed and hear this thing finally run. 
all right we got this thing out of the box here and ready to install i do believe that uh the guys over at area diesel service made a video about repairing this pump and uh fixing the carnage that i caused so if you guys are interested in that i'll definitely leave a link down in the description go check out their channel and uh check out the video of them fixing this pump for me i'm not 100 percent sure myself how they did it yet i'm pretty sure that this is a different housing because unless they stamped those numbers, and I don't think they did, uh, this is a, a whole different housing because I'm pretty sure I ruined the other one. All right, well, I lost my timing mark up here, so I just set it in the middle of the timing range and gonna start there. I don't know if there's some sort of procedure you're supposed to do to determine an initial timing, but uh, the middle seems like it can't be that bad. Alrighty, we got that beautiful injection pump put back together in there. I got all the injection lines connected, the fuel lines and the return lines oh. connected, and. Also got the 12 volts going to the fuel shutoff solenoid. We are ready to see if this thing is finally gonna push fuel. I got the valves turned back on on the tank. I think we should be able to just go ahead and start cranking this thing over until we get fuel percolating out of those lines. So I'm gonna start cranking it over. Hopefully we're pushing fuel up to the injectors to purge the lines of all the air. And then theoretically all we should have to do is crank the lines down till they seat and this thing should fire up. I have been having the starter solenoid uh, get stuck in every time I start cranking this thing. So yeah, things might get a little chaotic, but uh, here we go, contact. I'm gonna keep doing the starter in short bursts. That way we run less risk of that solenoid sticking, it seems. Contact. Contact. I think it looks like we've got fuel coming out of all six injectors here so we can go ahead and crank those things down and see if this thing's gonna fire up what do you think pen is this thing gonna fire up or what daddy have any idea what he's doing probably not this uh this may be where i <laughs> where i find out i screwed up the timing or something i don't know i guess uh i guess this is the moment of truth got the injector lines all cranked down the fuel's bled we should be able to just hit the trigger and hopefully it's just going to light off there's no glow plugs hooked up so i don't know how quick it's gonna be persuaded contact All right, I'm just gonna give it a little tickle of ether. Like I said, the glow plugs are not functional right now. There's not even wires connected to them. So I'm just gonna give it a little tickle of ether just to see if that'll get it to pop off. Here we go. Contact. Well, this starter is really starting to irritate me. I think we're probably still just purging some air out.
Come on, Dak. It's also quite possible that I had the timing off, probably. Come on, Dak. It runs, but I think the timing's a little off. What do you think, Penny? A little smoky, huh? Yeah, the price was right, though. So I've actually... So I've actually never adjusted timing on an engine like this. I know that sounds like a kind of basic thing to do, but I've just never had to do it. So I approached it the same way I do automotive timing without a timing light. It's just... On a car, you'd be loosening and adjusting the distributor. But on this thing, you're just twisting that pump to where it seems like it runs the best. And, well, as you can see, it's still not really running the best. But it might just need run. I mean, this thing has been sitting for about seven or eight years, supposedly. So we're just going to run it for a little bit and see if it clears up. And then I'll probably research and figure out exactly how I'm supposed to time this thing as well. All right, it's run for a few minutes now. I think it's starting to clear up a little bit, but... Still, it probably just needs the crap run out of it. <laughs> Boy, I am so happy to see that thing finally start up. That was a frustrating one. As you can see, it is a little bit smoky. And by the way, everybody keeps asking me if I have a fume extraction system, or why don't I, rather. And uh, I do. It's up there, but as you can see, it ain't turning. I still have to get it wired up. I have to run a conduit up the wall right there to that fan and get that thing hooked up. I need to do that. As much as I want to jump on this thing right now and start playing and see if the hydraulics work, well, I kind of know that they work uh, just from cranking it over. But as much as I want to jump on there and see if the transmission goes and it drives and runs and stops and all that, it's late and the wife's got dinner ready. Me and the pooch got to head home and get some kibble. So be tomorrow for me but right now for you guys all right it's the next day let's see if this thing's gonna cold start at all and uh, if it does we're gonna pull it outside hopefully and let it warm up out there and try to maybe adjust that timing a little better turns over a lot faster with the booster on it
How's that for a cold start, huh? Ugh. I think we got some injectors that probably aren't running the best as well as the timing being off a little bit. Let's get this thing outside, hopefully. I gotta see if the bucket even works. I gotta see if the transmission even works. I'm gonna dump some ATF in the fuel tank there and maybe that'll help uh, get those injectors working a little bit better. Other than that, I'm basically just gonna let it sit here and run a little while. Well, she's been idling for about 15 or 20 minutes and so far the ATF hasn't worked any miracles. I'm just going to try running it around a bit and see what, what happens. radiator cap is just bad. I noticed it had some wispy uh, pressure coming out of it there.
you have to really admire the bucket geometry that they've got going on here with this thing. Modern loaders, for the most part, as far as I know, all have automatic bucket leveling. So as you lift the loader arms up, the bucket doesn't just go straight in line with the arms. It actually keeps itself kind of level as you go. This machine does not have that, however. And the geometry is such that if you don't keep the bucket flat, you're going to eat just about everything in that bucket. In fact, I think that whole piece up on top there might be added on. I don't even know if that piece, the apron on the back of it there, the splash guard, whatever you want to call that thing, I, that might be <laughs> added on by end users because they were probably always eating gravel or dirt or whatever. So after driving this thing up and down the driveway one good time there, I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm not in love with it, that's for sure, but it is a neat little machine. It turns pretty good. Everything functions. The reverse gear seems to hesitate when it goes in, and I can't tell if that's a linkage issue or if something in the transmission is just not wanting to jive. But both forward gears, high and low, work. One brake out of all four tires, one brake works, I believe it's this one, but it works really well, which is odd. Usually when you're down to just one brake, they don't work so hot. But that one, man, she dang near locks up when you touch the pedal. The hydraulics are reasonably fast. The bucket's actually been up in the air for like a half an hour now and hasn't bled off, so impressed with that. I'm sure it's drifting, but it's not bleeding at a high rate of speed, which is nice. Before I even took off down the driveway, I noticed we had a little bit of steam coming out of the radiator. Before I took off, I didn't show you guys, but I checked it all with my temp gun here. We were not overheating at all. We were well within temp, you know. I think we were hovering around 160 before I took off down the driveway. By the time I got down to the end of the driveway, it was actually pushing coolant out of the dealio there. And I checked it again, and we were still within temperature. We were right at 180, still not bad at all, not overheating. By the time I got back down here, I was pushing coolant yet again. And I don't know if you guys can see it. I can't even see it real well. Oil. But, uh, so if it, it is looks oil, like we got a bunch of oil in coolant, mixing into our coolants. That, so that ain't could good. be wrong with it. I'm kind of leaning towards head gasket though right now because right there where the head meets the block, it looks like we've got a heck of an oil leak. So that could be the head gasket also blowing out externally. The whole thing is pretty darn greasy. It was also a bit hard to start and I did have to give it a little bit of ether and I see that our fuel inlet here is leaking a little bit so that also means if it's leaking it could suck air. So theoretically we could be losing our prime that way. She's been sitting out here about a half an hour. Let's see how this thing starts.
So aside from just seemingly getting hot and pushing coolant out very easily, um, I pulled the radiator cap off here a couple days later and uh, have a gander at this. <laughs> That's supposed to be coolant, not oil. But sure enough, it's got quite a bit of oil in the cooling system, so that is not good. I'm going to pull the dipstick and check, but the last time I had pulled the dipstick, there was no coolant on it, so that means we're not contaminating both ends of the system, just getting oil into the coolant. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say we're looking still okay on our oil. I mean, it, it's black and it definitely needs service, but I don't see any water in it. It looks pretty good as far as that goes. So, the injection pump that Area Diesel Service sent us back here, I, I can know that it's 100% now since it's been rebuilt and it's doing its job perfectly. What I think is failing us now at this point is injectors. I think we probably got some hung up nasty injectors in there. Well, alrighty, what have we learned here? Well, nothing in this world that's free comes without issues. And I'm not complaining about this one bit. I still think this was uh, well worth the drive up to pick up this machine. But as to be expected, there are bigger issues. Definitely need to investigate that head gasket situation a lot more. Um, pretty sure that we need to redo the injectors, so I'll probably have to send those out to area diesel service as well and get those things serviced. I probably should have just pulled them right from the get-go and sent them all out. And that way we knew we had a completely good fuel system. But Hindsight is 2020, and uh, well, you guys just get another video out of it if that's the route we go. The thing that really concerns me, and I didn't get to show on camera, is that this engine actually has a lot of blow-by, and I don't think that the, I don't remember exactly what engine model this is off the top of my head, I have to look that up, but I do believe these engines have a poor reputation to start with, so between that and parts availability, I don't know that this engine is worth putting a lot of time and effort into. I do still like this machine. I think it's a pretty neat loader. It's, uh, it's kind of unique. I mean, wheel loaders are plentiful, but this one is just kind of unique for its size and uh, the way it's configured here. So this thing kind of reminds me of a big Tonka toy. So that's kind of why I'm partial to it. So I'm not sure what the future holds for this beast, but we do know that the engine runs and that's something I can move it around here under its own power now. But so not only is the engine a problem, this thing has a whole host of other issues being clapped out bushings, worn out cutting edges. I mean, 8,000 leaks underneath of it. It leaks just a little bit of every fluid, which adds up to a lot of bit of a lot of fluid. One out of four brakes work. The good news is the transmission seems to be in pretty good working order, so I can't complain about that. All the wiring in this thing needs looked at and gone through and pretty much just stripped out and started fresh. Um, so it would take a lot of work to get this thing back to a good, reliable, turnkey, usable loader. Does that mean I'm not willing to put in the work? No, but there are other projects that need to be placed ahead of this thing for now. So I think I'm going to end up throwing it back together, pulling it outside, and uh, she's going to go into the healing weeds for now until a later date. And just a little bit of insider information for those of you that choose to watch to the end of the video. I'm always getting bugged about the auto car series. And I have the 57 auto car cab been sitting in the back of the shop here and I've been meaning to work on it, but just haven't found the time as I have more pressing issues around the property and the building. But, uh, Stumbled upon a good deal the other day. I'm actually going to pick up an aluminum cab to replace that rotted out steel one. So that's just a small auto car update for you guys. And hopefully when we get that cab back here, that means I'm going to get a little renewed vigor and want to get onto that project a little bit faster. I've also got a bunch of other cool updates coming and you will see those in later videos, but we're going to be working on both auto car trucks very soon here. And I'm uh, pretty excited about that. So but anyways, I guess to wrap this thing up, it does run, it does function, albeit not very well. Once I get a little more caught up on some more pressing projects around here, maybe we'll pull this thing back in and show it some love. But until such a time, I wanna thank you guys as always for watching. And if you like this video, do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button down below the video. It doesn't cost you guys a dime and it really helps me to keep making the right kind of videos that you guys wanna see. 
In addition, if you would like to help support the channel in a different way, you can head on over to dieselcreek.com. The link is down in the description. We've got all kind of cool t-shirts and merchandise over there for sale. We've got hats, hoodies, t-shirts, sticker packs, beer koozies, you name it, over at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But that's all I've got for today, guys. So again, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Later.